welcome back to my channel welcome to a vlog that is going to primarily be from abud bali abud is bali's culture center it is i mean geographically the center but also kind of where all the traditional balinese things that you've probably heard of and seen on instagram are and we are heading there today i feel like this vlog is gonna include quite a lot it's gonna be across five days it's potentially gonna be quite long but i'm gonna show you the absolute must do's and things that we get up to whilst traveling in abud Plus everything else we go up to as well. Obviously we're doing the must-sees, we're doing the tourist attractions, but we've booked a couple of other random bits and bobs. Plus we just want to explore the town slash city and show you guys it. So subscribe and let's get into it. Tom is outside on the balcony. Are you excited to head to Abud? I am. I don't really know what to expect. Though. I don't know either. And the journey is, I think, about exactly one hour. But we're getting a grab. We're heading there now. <laughs> interlude on this Bali vlog because I have a product that I absolutely need to tell you guys about. It is really no secret at all that whilst I was traveling, whilst I was backpacking, whilst I was in Bali, I was bitten relentlessly by bugs and mosquitoes. If you've seen any of the vlogs, not only have I complained about it, but you can see it, like my legs especially bad bites and actually it has been one of the most annoying things about backpacking and traveling now this section of this vlog is very kindly sponsored by bite away who definitely got in touch with me after seeing how badly bitten i've been and probably thought she really needs our product and they were right i really need this product all i can say is i wish i had packed this and taken it with me and it will definitely be top of my packing list on every single trip i take abroad from now on bite away is a medical device that is clinically proven to treat the sting and itchiness of insect bites and stings the way it works is with concentrated heat there are no chemicals involved at all so this is what it looks like it essentially is sort of like a pen like a dibber and how it works is if you have been bitten or stung and trust me you will know about it when you have you use this product like a pen so it is super straightforward as in it is literally just one click you place the tip of the heat pen on the bite select a treatment time so either three or five seconds and wait until the green light appears and that's it then you can relax as the symptoms and the itchiness are relieved within just two minutes and it also holds up to 300 uses per battery life so it's not going to run out anytime soon now obviously the best part about this is just how travel friendly and small this is honestly this is the perfect travel accessory i can't stress to you how much i wish i had this in asia there's going to be a link the top line in the description to where you guys can check out bite away for yourself plus they have really kind of given you a 10 percent off discount code which is bite away 66 and even better there is a lightning deal happening today june the 9th over on amazon so you can get it for even more of a bargain but if you do want to purchase it you're going to have to be speedy because that ends tonight so if you're watching my channel and you're watching my travel vlogs because you're planning your own trip maybe to bali maybe to asia or just maybe a holiday in general i can't recommend this enough and trust me trust me this is going to be with me wherever i'm traveling from now on so without further ado let's jump back to abud where shock horror i was actually really badly bitten and could have done with this we have arrived in a bud guys it is now 20 past one this is like our first meal of the day we're both starving so i'm so excited about it i've ordered a breakfast smoothie and i've also ordered quesadillas and sweet potatoes but we are in casa de luna which i think is quite popular here it has really good reviews the main reason we've headed here is because it is literally next door to the hotel that we're staying at so it just made the most sense because we can't check into our room until two so we're gonna have food here and then we should be able to go back that was top. I am so excited about this. Honestly, breakfast quesadillas with cheese, egg, spinach, salsa, sweet potato fries. Tom went for truffle fries. These are amazing. And then a pork eggs benedict, which also looks amazing. We have just arrived at our hotel. We are staying, I'm gonna take the bandana off now. We're staying at a hotel called Honeymoon Suites, which is ironic because Tom and I have been asked if we're here on honeymoon at least six times so far. People are like, oh, honeymoon, newlyweds, husband. And we're like, no, no, no. But we are staying at somewhere called Honeymoon Suites. I'm gonna show you the room. This was incredible for the price. Like we are in the heart of Abud, literally in the very center, but kind of off, like, like down a street so it's not loud it's not like you're getting the traffic or anything but it felt more like a temple i'll show you the outside isn't it stunning it's very stunning it's for, for the price honestly so we paid 72 pounds for five days so that's 36 pounds each 36 pounds for five days got these like big or 
authentic doors. Outside we have this balcony area. We've got a little sofa, we've got table and chairs. We've also got somewhere to hang clothes, these gorgeous sculptures. And then as you walk in, this just looks amazing. So we've got, for some reason, I'm not too sure why, we've got a double bed and a single bed with mosquito nets. I actually really find it helpful when they give you mozzie nets because it stops you from getting bites and I'm so prone to being bitten. We've then got this desk area with huge floor to ceiling windows with a beautiful view out across like the fields. So like some gorgeous little roofs over here. And then I think the star of the show is the bathroom. Do you not agree? Oh, beautiful. Do you want, can I do the bathroom? Yeah, do the bathroom tour. Guys, look at the doors to the bathroom. Go on, Tom, take it away. Welcome to my bathroom. Welcome to the bathroom. My bathroom. Your bathroom. Very nice bath. Which is actually quite big. Most of the baths we've had are tiny. That's, well, if we've ever had a bath. That's true. Rare. Very rare. Oh, actually, there's no shower. Oh, no, there's a shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a shower. Very nice shower. Which is beautiful. Toilet. Oddly placed. Oddly placed. Beautiful mirror and basin. Like, this is really, really nice. Sorry, you this. Oh, sorry, sorry, go on. Thank you. Yeah, really nice basin and towels. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is another personal favourite. I love that the inside of here looks like a museum. Like when you consider especially that it cost 36 British pounds for five days. You just can't you just can't complain. That's the room tour over. In about half an hour, Tom, what are we going to do? Pottery. Pottery! Pottery! We're going to do a pottery painting class. We don't really have time to do a pottery making class. I did really want to, but just because of how long it takes to like set in a kiln, and we don't have time to like go back and pick it up. So we're gonna do pottery painting instead. So that is where we're heading in a minute. Now, going to do this activity might seem a little bit random. Basically, I just read about it online, this specific pottery shop, and I thought, I really want to do that. But actually, it was one of my favourite activities that we did just in general. I am quite creative. I might not be very good at it, but I actually just really enjoyed doing stuff like this, so I had a great time. Sort of does look like your local four-year-old made it and I want to reiterate that I did an art foundation degree and I'm a, I'm a bit embarrassed about that. Don't hate it. Like imagine some flowers in that in my bedroom. I think it looks really nice. And Tom's like, oh my god, it's so good. And Tom's also lying. Let's look at some other people's. Wow, we. Wow, wow. I mean, to be honest, that's sort of what I was going for. It just did not work out how I planned it. This art studio is so cool. Love it. Bali is all about balance, and that looks like balance to me. I bought these earrings from a little stall, and I feel like I've embraced my full hippie now, like my full hippie lifestyle is out. I also bought this headband. We are randomly and spontaneously booked to go and see a traditional Balinese dance. This is something I really wanted to do because, I think I mentioned this in the last Bali vlog, but my mum actually came to Bali when she was 22. So she has been here, and she gave me a list of things that she did, and just kind of for like nostalgic, time sick and she sent me some photos of this Balinese dance that she went to we've just decided randomly to go and do it tonight like we, we did not have this in the plan but we were walking past the palace in Abud and they were selling tickets and it's only on Thursdays we're gonna go ahead there now the only thing it does sort of scupper is like we don't really have time to eat so we're gonna be able to get some street food afterwards but I'm really excited and I think this is gonna be a really cool bit of like Bali culture so let's go <laughs> have just finished at the Balinese dance and we've popped into this restaurant that is literally next door. It's called Gidong Sisi and they serve a really great mixture of like Indonesian speciality food and then also Western food. Tom and I are very happy. I think I am going to go for Indonesian because I had a really good Indonesian vegetarian dish the other day but I'm not too sure which one it is. Oh guys, they were so accommodating. I asked if I could make it vegetarian and she asked if I wanted it with tofu instead or with vegetables or with egg and I was like, 
all of it here, so that's what I'm getting. The Balinese dance was really good. It was a little bit different. I've never seen anything like it. It was kind of like going to watch a cross between, I guess, any kind of dance. Cross with like a piece of theatre, really. Like it was telling a story the whole time. And that's the beauty of dance. I guess you don't need a language to tell that story. So everybody watching it can understand it, which was really nice. So much of the puppet show in that. Yeah, I thought of the puppet show that we saw in Vietnam, actually. How good does this look, guys? I've even got a tofu satay skewer. I'm so bloody buzzing because I love satay. Like chicken satay was one of my favorite things before I was veggie. Like if I, especially if I was having like Thai or like Asian food. And I haven't had anything like this so far so I'm very excited. Do you want to know one of my most ridiculous things about being scared of spiders guys? If you've watched my channel for a while you'll know I have an extreme spider phobia. If you knew, hello, I have an extreme spider phobia. And one time, I don't know where this has come from, I don't know if it happened to me when I was a child or if I saw it on the telly, I don't know what it is. But I saw somebody close the curtains and a spider fall out of one of the folds of the curtains onto them as they close the curtains. And since then I have this ridiculous thing where I, I can't close curtains. In countries like this, whenever we stay in a big room where it's got like big high ceilings, I always have like floor to ceiling curtains. And my anxiety is just like, you can't close the curtains while you just can't do it. So Tom has to do it. And on the nights where Tom's fallen asleep before the curtains are closed, we just sleep with the curtains open. And that is how you know it's a ridiculous irrational phobia. And I feel stupid telling you guys, but I also know that so many of you also are probably like me and like have extreme even if it's not spiders like phobias of something and it just makes your rational brain not work i swear so high up, any spiders in here? hey it's nothing to do with how high up you are spiders can climb i've seen them yeah, I'm not gonna i've seen them uh, also where's the toothpaste the toothpaste you have the toothpaste no, no you have the toothpaste I promise. Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'll pick you guys up in the morning and I'm so excited for tomorrow. It's gonna be a jam-packed day. We're starting with an 8 a.m. yoga class. So I'll pick you up at about 7 in the morning. It is 7 a.m. Tom and I are going to yoga. Very abud of us. This is my first ever, ever, ever time doing yoga and I'm just hoping that they cater to beginners. Are you nervous? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be bad. I'm gonna be very bad because I'm not flexible. So. <laughs> Same, same, 100% same. <laughs> needed it was truly an experience wasn't it thomas it was. truly bit of a different breakfast this morning i've got goat's cheese poached egg pesto and feta on toast so guys this is the hotel that we're staying in as you walk here this is the pool and it's actually so so beautiful it's set in the grounds of what looks exactly exactly like a temple so like it's really authentic kind of like you know the stone how lucky are we to be staying somewhere that looks like this it's actually crazy they have also got so much ground guys that like, there's so many rooms here honestly when we were walking down here yesterday i was like is this part of a temple i am back from yoga and from breakfast again i'm embracing my inner like hippie <laughs> i feel like a little like a yoga mum right now which would make sense because we've just been to yoga however it wasn't yoga like we kind of thought it was going to be we did no research we literally just turned up to the first place we found that was reasonably priced and it was kind of like what i would call and what i think in the uk is maybe probably called like holistic yoga where it's all about like connecting with like spirituality and it's not really anything to do with flexibility and like poses it was a lot more to do with like connecting to your energy and like like chanting and like mantras and making very strange sounds tom and i were so out of our depth it was hilariously funny like i was trying so hard to not laugh the whole time and i have so much respect for people that do this every day but personally i just don't think it's for us however we are both really glad that we tried it i felt like it was a true bali experience at the end we did a bit of meditation which i've never really done before like i've listened to like calming meditations to help you sleep or to stop you from being anxious but i've never like sat and done like a meditation where it's like music and like, guided and i actually really enjoyed that and i do think i came away feeling like happier and like tom said he came away feeling lighter i just personally don't know if that is the style of yoga that i want to try again but i'm glad we did it i think we probably will do yoga again in bali but like a traditional more like pilates kind of yoga now we're gonna head to the rice terraces they are another famous landmark here in abu i imagine you've seen them all over your instagram it has a famous swing it's it's what a bud is famous for so we're gonna head there and then this afternoon we're gonna head to monkey forest are you excited oh sorry i was on the video <laughs> <laughs> sound a bit more enthusiastic 
Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> Like I said, the rice paddies are an absolute must-do in Bali. They are a little bit touristy now, but I'm not gonna lie, I really enjoyed it. This is the swing that you've potentially probably seen on Instagram at some point. And yes, I was a sucker for it and paid to go on it. I don't care, I'm probably never gonna come back here. You can see why this is a tourist trap though. Look at how beautiful these views are. It was incredible. We were also really lucky because we hired a driver, just a regular taxi driver to take us around all day. This is the easiest way to do it and the most common way to do it in Bali. So he drove us from the rice paddies to the coffee plantation that we went to and then also onwards to the monkey forest. This is literally the most straightforward way of doing the sights in a bud and it's what most people do. Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right we're gonna try a cappuccino <laughs> guys we are just trying all the different teas and coffee that they make here at this coffee That's plantation so nice. Tom's on the hot chocolate of course he is but we've also realized we both really like rosella tea this is like hot red tea for like antioxidants guys i think my favorite is avocado coffee who knew that avocado coffee was so good oh that is good Right? It tastes how I imagine the weasel coffee. Yeah. We have just arrived at Ubud's famous monkey forest. I'm very excited. I'm also quite nervous about potentially being attacked by monkeys or having something stolen off me. If you guys see this vlog, it means that um, my camera stayed intact. I've just seen a monkey. I have never thought of myself as being scared of monkeys. And now I'm around them and I'm like, I'm kind of scared of monkeys. My fear is one jumping out of a tree onto me. Like there's one here, this one's fine because it's like on the path. But what if one of them jumps out of a tree onto me. You're not scared? Uh, I'm a little bit worried that it might nick my phone. Yeah. Guys, from start to finish, this was such an odd experience. Monkeys are so intelligent and I'd never been this close up to this many before. The longer we spent in the forest, the more comfortable I got around them because I thought, you know, they're generally gentle creatures, although I do have a bit of a horror story coming up in a second. But in the forest itself, I really enjoyed the experience. It's just crazy how much they have personalities. Like they are literally their own little characters. It was so funny. No, guys, this one here just jumped onto that man and tried to take his phone and his sunglasses. I'm not even joking. Nah, I'm frightened. Tom's, zipping it back up. Tom's got everything in his zippy pockets. I don't have a zippy pocket. I play a game called Spot How Many Monkeys You Can See. Oh my god, look behind us. They're all just getting each other's fleas off. Guys, I sort of feel like I've entered an episode of Jumanji. An episode? The film Jumanji. This whole experience is so bizarre, honestly. Truly, what an experience today has been. It has been wild. Like, I I said I didn't think I was scared of monkeys. I went through a phase where I wasn't before I came here. Then I was. Then I wasn't while we were in the forest again. And then afterwards, we went for a drink. And we're sitting in this bar. And out of nowhere, I'm not joking you, a monkey drops from the roof onto Tom, tries to bite him, knocks over the glass he's drinking out of, sticks its hands into my glass, takes the ice out of my glass, starts eating it, goes back onto Tom, tries to bite him again. We are like trying to move away by this point, but obviously like we don't want to startle it. So like we're trying to move away without screaming and kicking up a fuss. We're also with Sean, who is here in Bali. So we were having a drink, the three of us. So then I was scared of them again. And I was like, oh my God. The only good thing is apparently all of the monkeys that are in monkey forest have been vaccinated so like if you get scratched by them you're less likely to be able to get rabies from them and honestly it was wild wasn't it it was it was really wild it was it scary was, it was quite scary we came back we had a nap because we're actually going to be getting up at two in the morning to do a sunrise hike for like three hours to the top of a volcano so we just had an hour of sleep we're going to go out and have some food now let's go
margarita pizza on the menu tonight with the that side of live great. music. Honestly, at first I was a bit sad because this was the only vegetarian option on the menu, but then I'm a bit happy because it's a proper margarita, so I'm, I'm pretty buzzing about that. This is a restaurant in a hotel. It's actually rated the second best restaurant in a bird, and this was where we were listening to the live music, and he was like in the... I was going to say he was in the pool. He wasn't, but there was like a big infinity pool. It was a really cool restaurant, actually. It's just a shame because quite a lot of places are still really quiet. This is something we've noticed just continuously backpacking. And you can just imagine what they would have been like pre-pandemic, but the atmosphere is just not quite the same because, like, the tourism isn't quite there yet. This definitely would have been a place that the rats like booking advance. Hundred yeah. percent. Good morning, and by morning I mean 1.50 a.m. Usually haven't really properly gone into a deep sleep yet. We're going on a hike, <laughs> and it better be good. This is. My hiking outfit. Guys, I brought with me sports leggings and I've not worn them the entire trip but it's only actually 22 degrees right now and apparently it's even colder when you're doing the walk. They've also told us to bring a jacket so Tom's behind me putting on his little packer back jacket. I've packed mine as well. It feels weird to be wearing that like leggings like tight trousers on my bottom half so I just haven't worn them since February that's weird but yeah we're going on a volcano hike to watch the sunrise and apparently it's a really long way. Guys, there's a backstory to why this is so desperately needed, but now is not the time to tell it. Tom's got a tomato soup, looks bloody great. Mm -hmm. Hello guys, I did not update you. And honestly, this morning was quite the experience. We were not blessed with the weather, so we did not see a sunrise. Um, it was thick fog. Because you're doing a hike up a volcano, when you get to the top, you're in a cloud. What they didn't really warn us about was that you need to be really quite physically fit to do this hike, which I am not. Like, I am hold my hands up and say, I've never really properly exercised in my life. Apart from a brief period in the lockdown where I kind of did running. We were climbing and to start with it was really flat and then for the last like hour and a half it was honestly at an incline angle where you had to sort of be using your hands but because there was about 200 people doing this hike there was like a rhythm and like you just couldn't really stop and I was so unbelievably out of breath. I felt like I could not breathe honestly. I, I did not enjoy it. Like I'm, I'm being honest you guys know I love an honest review. I think if you're fit or if you're happy to like go at your own pace and just kept like keep stepping back and people were doing that then it probably would be fine and obviously if you get to the top and there's a beautiful sunrise I imagine it feels like it's worth it but we got to the top and we just looked like we were looking out of an aeroplane window into cloud like we would there was nothing like you saw what I saw personally I wouldn't do it again it took us four hours on the walk up and an hour on the walk down in total it was like it was only actually about nine kilometers but it felt so much longer obviously because of the incline it took five hours it was intense, like don't get me wrong, I'm glad that I can say that I've done it and I'm proud of both me and Tom for like completing it because there was definitely times where I was like, I don't want to finish. It was a lot, it was probably the most intense activity I've done since backpacking and I fear what? that I'm not, we're probably not going to be able to walk tomorrow. I know, my legs are killing. It's such a shame that risotto is like my favourite meal because it does not photograph nicely or ever look appetising at all. But guys, I've got a mushroom risotto and I've never been more excited about it. I haven't had a risotto since we left the UK in February and genuinely this is my favourite meal. We're at a real Italian restaurant. It's like a proper Italian restaurant. Tom's ordered a, like a stone-fired pizza. So I just know that this is going to be incredible and I'm so excited about it. You know when it's a good Italian restaurant when they actually have legit dessert. Yeah, they had Di Serrano. Not Amaretto, not anything else. Actual Italian Di Serrano. They brought us lemoncello and almoncello shots. Does it smell nice? Like a Bailey's? Mine's just that actual lemoncello. Really? Oh, that's really nice. That's so nice. So strong. That's how you know this is a proper Italian restaurant as well, guys. Like. Oh, guys, we didn't need dessert. We're trying both to be good, but we've had a drink and we wanted dessert, so we got dessert. And you know what? Life is too short to not have the dessert. Like, who actually cares when there's food that tastes like this? 
Good morning, it is Sunday. It is actually our last full day here in Abud, so we have decided to do the classic Balinese Instagram activity, which is have a floating breakfast. This is particularly popular here. I'm pretty sure it is a Bali original like thing, although I'm sure places worldwide have definitely copied this. But our hotel that we're staying in doesn't actually offer it. It's usually like the higher end resorts, like the really expensive places, which there are a lot of. If you're coming to Bali with a big budget, you could stay in some absolutely beautiful hotels here. We're kind of doing it as an in-between. We are staying in hotels, but we're not picking like super, super, super beauty ones. However, I found this breakfast that just looks incredible. It was quite expensive, but it's completely private, so like you're not sharing it with anybody else, which was something that I really wanted, just because I do want to get some cool content. Plus, I really want it to be a really nice like, date activity for Tom and I. So we've already pre-booked our menu, and you get so much food, guys. Like, we are gonna be eating and eating and eating. We're not gonna need another meal today. Like, honestly, there's about seven courses. We're gonna head there now. I'm so excited. It's about a 10 minute drive like, out of Ubud town, so we need to get going. We got it. Oh, we don't need no more. Oh, even in the hard times, you and I can weather any storm. Before I sleep, hear the crickets, see the moon, side by side and through. This is such a beautiful infinity pool. Like, it's so, so stunning here. All that we're looking out on, really, is the rainforest, which is just incredible. That breakfast was definitely an experience. <laughs> I've locked, I've locked Tom in the room. I think I'm so funny. I've had four Proseccos and I think I'm bloody hilarious. Go on. And do you want to come out or not? No. <laughs> mean. <laughs> Yeah, so I had like a, quite a few glasses of Prosecco because Tom doesn't really like Prosecco so I was like oh I'll just have it. We are now going to head to the Abud waterfalls and also the famous temples that are here in Abud hence why I'm dressed like I am. Basically there's two really famous temples or actually I think there's a few more. One of them is a water temple which actually sounds really cool and then we are heading to the famous waterfalls here in Abud so we've actually kept our swimwear on like underneath just so that we can go in this waterfall but I'm excited. Are you? I am excited, it'll be good. have come to a waterfall this is such a vibe they've got like really vibey music playing because up here they've got a beach bar tom's got an ice cream and they've just clearly geared it up for some instagram spots i'm not gonna lie but it's also a really beautiful waterfall although it looks really forceful like tom and i thought we might be able to go and swim in it but like it's so powerful that it's actually like roped off <laughs> back from the temple this whole like villa has the worst lighting i'm very sorry uh this is my outfit of the night it's the little green two-piece that i bought in cotton on and we're actually gonna head for thai this evening i think we found a thai restaurant kind of near where we ate last night which is great because they also have a live band on tonight so we're gonna head there i don't know why i look quite rosy cheek did i get burnt today also guys um i am wearing the same top that i wore last night that is because it goes with this outfit and it didn't smell and also i'm gonna try and get away without doing any more washing now so i'm just gonna rework clothes and if you think that's disgusting you've probably never been backpacking however tom on the other hand is doing the other backpacker thing he's just buying new clothes so let's see your shirt that you just got there we go it's very barley he's gone for a holiday shirt i think it's nice i like it it's very different you've never had anything like that before but it's, what it reminds me of. it's fun i like it I feel like it's be something that Chris on the Philippines tour would wear. 100%, yeah, yeah, definitely. Cheeky pad tie. I just remembered that I asked for it with egg, and I don't think there is any egg there, but other than that. sharing a cheesecake in this next bar that we're in. This bar is called Alea, Alea Bar, and it has live music on. 
this is the end of the Abud vlog. I did not end it. What a shocker. These are Tom's feet. He's having a nap. I'm going to end it here. I know this was probably the longest vlog out of all the travel vlogs I've done so far. That is purely because there's so much to do in Abud and I'm not going to rehash it all. Hopefully this vlog has given you some insights into what you should do, where you should visit, where you should prioritize your time. If you're not a mountaineer and you don't like hikes, maybe don't climb the mountain. If you want to do spiritual yoga, maybe look into that. If you want to do normal yoga, maybe also research that properly. But honestly, Abud has been probably one of my favorite places of the entire backpacking trip and I hope that came across in this vlog. If you enjoyed it, give it a huge thumbs up. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about Abud specifically or Bali in the comments below. And other than that, I shall see you in the next vlog, which is coming at you from the Gilead. See you soon guys. Bye.